Gonna talk to Mitchell on the right and Andy <laughs> on the left. Now they both sell wine in Australia in various capacities, so they're experts about wine. Uh-huh. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna uh, hear about what's good, what's bad, what's hot, and what's not in Australian wine at the moment. So which one of you wants to go first about white wines? Oh, I get to go first about white ones, do I? Cool. Yeah. Could you tell us maybe about your favourites? Uh, my favourite, I suppose, is probably... I'm a bit more old-fashioned, so I kind of like a, an aged Semillon or an aged Riesling. But out there at the moment, there's a lot of popular wines, like um, Semillon Blanc from New Zealand always sells quite well. And um, <laughs> don't laugh. Yeah, I'm listening. Um, yeah, so Sav Blanc, um, things like, you know, some good Chardonnays as well um, usually sell. But my personal favourite is a nice aged um, Watervale Riesling. You know, it's a couple of years old. It's so, a really nice character. So with a Riesling, aged already counts for like two years or more? Yeah, you'd probably be looking at about, you know, three or four years old. They start off kind of young, fresh, they're a bit fruity little bit steely as well and then you know after about the two year mark they kind of lose some of that character and then another two years later they start to get a more um oily aged kind of character and they get a little bit toasty and um you know still retain some of the fruit but just you know the wine kind of evolves and changes character over time i'm interested in the description steely i haven't heard that about wine often what do you mean exactly it's kind of like a minerally character to the wine. So you can have a wine that's really fruity, so it has a lot of the fruit characters, whether it's lime or citrus or lemon. And then steely, it's more um, kind of like if you've ever tasted blood. It's that oh, yeah, steely yeah. kind of character. It's like a more mineral character as opposed yeah. to a fruit kind of character in wine. Mitchell, do you maybe want to talk about reds, like your favourite red? I don't have a favourite red. Well, do you have a favourite wine? Um, I don't know. I like all wines. But you know what that I work says. at Cellar Masters. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> if you were um, forced to drink a wine. If I have a choice, I, I really like Pinots at the moment. Is that like Pinot Noir? Pinot Noir. Yeah. Um, and there's some really nice ones around. Uh, I had a nice 97 Pinot Noir from Burgundy the other day. Is that considered Um, old for a Pinot Noir? uh, Yeah, it's definitely getting there. You can get older ones, but, you know, the older they are, the more you pay for them, of course. Um, New Zealand does some really good Pinots. Um, The Pinot areas in New Zealand are quite sort of rocky and very hard to grow grapes there and that sort of thing and they'd be getting like one or two tons of grapes to the hectare so that's a low ratio yeah in australia you might get 10 or 12 tons to the hectare yeah so you can almost taste the blood sweat and tears in new zealand (laughs) you know what do the prices compare like is there a price difference because of that yeah new zealand pinot can be quite expensive uh, particularly if you get one of the good good ones. Um, I don't know what you'd pay in a bottle shop because I get staff prices, of course, uh, and a lot of freebies. But, um, yeah, the New Zealand ones are definitely more expensive. I was in a, su- not a supermarket, um, a bottle shop, and there were two questions I wanted to ask both of you. Um, yep. About Pinot, they have it in the fridge area uh, and... Does that make a difference? Or should you have a cold? Because I've had it warm before, like room temperature. Not necessarily cold, but definitely colder than room temperature, I'd say. What do you think? Do you have an you opinion there? That? Um, I think probably for most red wines, particularly like a bigger style of red wine, like a Cab Sav or Shiraz, you'd probably want to have it at room temperature. Yeah. Whereas something like a Pinot, you could give it a light chill. Maybe. Sorry, there's a bus. Could you repeat that? <laughs> you might want to give it a light chill, so maybe like, you know, five to ten minutes in the fridge just to bring the, the temperature of it down a little bit. The only reason why you wouldn't want to have it too cold 
is that it closes the wine up and you lose some of the fruit characters and things like that and it makes the acid and the tannin in the wine seem more dominant than it should be enhance it like it overpowers those two senses and then you lose some of the fruit character so you're not really getting a true sense of the wine I've never thought about that. So the tannins can influence the flavour. I yeah. thought there was just some annoying thing there. That no, it's part of like through the winemaking process, you get um, tannins come from both the skins of the grapes, yeah, and also for uh, red wine uh, when it's stored in oak barrels as well. So you get that tanniny character that way. And really, it's one of it's just a it's a mouth feel thing. So you can feel it in your mouth. It's that drying sensation that you have when mm. you're drinking the wine. That kind of puckers your cheeks or makes it feel like your the inside of your cheeks are sticking to your gums after you've had it. I personally dislike that. Uh, is there a group of people who likes it and another who doesn't? Or um, it's yeah, there is. It's also a character of the wine as well. So you um, know what you're in for with some yeah. of them. So things like Cab Sav. Because it's got uh, thicker skin, yeah, um, you actually get more tannin during the just natural process of fermenting the grapes. Whereas things like a Pinot have a thinner skin, so you get less tannins during the production of the wine that's actually coming from the grapes themselves. And generally, also to the um, the tannins drop off the older the wine is, yeah. as well. Ha- uh, you mean? The longer it's stayed in a yeah. bottle. The older the vintage of wine you're drinking, the more the yeah. tannin drops off. So and so that's down. why you get those wines that are like 10 years old and they're quite smooth and silky. But if you drank them when they were first bottled, you'd have cat's bum face because the tannins <laughs> would be quite strong. <laughs> we should probably wrap up soon. But um, just finally, the Eternals question I get different answers from everyone for the screw cap versus uh, cork in Australia is there a, is there a change almost all the way through now or yeah we're pretty close to all the way through um, particularly in uh, last year's range of sparklings we've definitely seen a lot more crown seal caps rather than the cork You'll have to explain um, to me and to others what the crown seal crown is. Crown seal is like, uh, like you have on a top of a beer bottle. Oh, um, on a sparkling wine. Yeah, I haven't seen one. So they don't screw off. You have to like lift them off. Um, but I mean, they're really good. I'll have to check I'm, one out. I've never seen. Them. I'm all for anything that isn't cork, particularly if you've got a wine that you want to have for a long time. The cork is less good for storage. Well, the the chance of spoilage is much greater with cork. Okay, guys, thanks very much. No problems. Cheers, bye. Bye.